Hi, and welcome to Answers News for April 9th, 2018. At least that's what it says. April 9th? Isn't it, isn't um, it January 89th? You, <laughs> no, I am not convinced. You, you can tell that it's spring. You can. How? Because this morning, that's what it looked like. Uh, down at the Ark, oh. look at that. Here's some pictures that were taken this morning. Yeah, I know. It looked like that at my house too. Down so. there in Amzara's kitchen. Yep. I'm just sad. And the All funny my... thing is, I'll probably use my air conditioner this afternoon too. Yeah. <laughs> in the car. My beautiful tulip tree, you know, these blossoms are, you know, getting ready to come out and they're just covered with snow right now. And I'm like, no, it's not fair. Yep. Flowers with snow on them. This That's is one of the snowiest, the like, late springs I've ever seen. And I've lived in this general area all my life. So I don't know what is going on. Okay, so I'm just watching and watching on my uh, Facebook here. And I see people starting to jump on now. It always takes a little bit uh, for them to jump on. And we encourage people to tell us where they're from, from around the world. We have people from all over the place. So the first person that said uh, where they're from is from Texas. Look at that. And someone from Minnesota. Uh, so numbers are increasing quickly as people get their notifications and uh, I wonder if anyone is supposed to be working when they're watching this or sneak off or have their, have their break, afternoon break or whatever it is. <laughs> and we hope you're watching it legally. Oh, now they're starting to send a lot of those emojis which is really good. New York City, hello from the Villages, Florida. Um, I'm sure it wasn't snow down there this morning mm. in, no. in Florida. So we've got a number of people coming on. Um, so, someone suggested that someone keeps shaking the snow globe. <laughs> Feels like it. The snow globe is, uh, is Earth. Another one from Florida. Look at that. Someone from Tennessee, Tennessee. and Michigan. Oh, now they're starting to really uh, get online here. Colorado. Okay, so just before we get underway with commenting on the news items, I wanted to mention to you, for the very first time in the history of the whole universe, <laughs> The very first time in the history of the whole universe, I'm going, Go to, I'm going, to, I'm going to announce something. It. You ready for this? Hey, we didn't welcome our studio audience. Can you all clap oh, so people yep. know that you're here? There, there we go. Good. Um, there's a brand new book that just came out. I know. And we're offering it for sale today for the very first time. Actually, it's, it was for sale at the women's conference. Yeah. Oh, was Saturday. it? Oh, that was, that was on Saturday. We sold it Saturday. We snagged it. <laughs> okay. Right um, and it's done up as a, as a hard here. cover with, uh, you know, it's got the dust cover jacket on here and like a nice little um, sort of gift book. You know, it's, it's easy for people to read. Easy it for is. Them to very get through it's called Gospel Reset, Salvation Made Relevant. And it's actually a, a brand new book that I've written uh, that somebody here said, I didn't say this, one of our marketing people said this, perhaps the most timely book on evangelism today. It's really about how to take the gospel to a secularized culture. This is a very different world we live in. And in fact, at the beginning of the book, uh, what I say in here, and I dedicate it to my mother, by the way, who's 90 years old in Australia. But I talk about Billy Graham passing away and a couple of the headlines that were... Uh, in the news, uh, one said there will never be another Billy Graham because the world that made him possible is gone. On Tucker Carlson on Fox News, he said uh, he basically just preached the Bible. In America of that time, that was enough. People stopped him on the street, shake his hand. We live in a different country now. And that's the point. We live in a different country. The whole Western world has changed. And if you really want to reach the people today with the gospel we have got to understand they think in a different way yeah. and you can't just go out there and say you sin or repent of your sin they don't even know what sin is in fact even when you go out there and say, say the bible says they've been indoctrinated against the bible and so I use in here uh, a, a biblical basis of gospel being presented in Acts 2 and Acts 17 gospel to the Jews, gospel to the Greeks of comparing our culture of yesterday and our culture today and talking about the fact that we need an Acts 17 type presentation uh, of the gospel today. Yeah. And so um, if people uh, order that, uh, they can also get uh, a free video download of a message I gave in Australia just recently mm -hmm. called Communicating the Christian Message in a Secularized Culture. So it's yeah. really the video message of the book. Right. I did that in Australia. So yeah. anyway, that's uh, the Gospel Reset. And it's a brand new book that uh, just came out, and uh, I think it—I think this could have an incredible impact. I, I, I'd love to see every pastor, every Christian leader, every parent read this book, getting in the hands of all the Sunday school teachers, of all the leaders in your churches, 
Uh, this is the sort of book that can have a, a, a great impact there. So, okay, Georgia, over well, to you. Well, people are saying when they're watching. This, this woman says, I'm a nanny. I watch while the baby is napping. So that's perfect. That's hey, perfect time. Go. Or I'm a homeschool mom. This is my work. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's true. Oh, there's too, somebody so. in the audience that's watching us. That's really right. great. <laughs> uh, somebody from Northeastern okay. California. Hey, I'm glad people are from California watching because the first article it's is about, all about well, California. Well, somebody even said that on here. It said, home of the killer coffee. <laughs> and uh, the first article was attack of the killer cappuccino. So yep. this is because in a Los Angeles Superior Court ruled last week, ruled basically against places like Starbucks and other cafes and gas stations that would penalize them if they did not because they could not definitively prove that coffee doesn't cause cancer. So, I mean, so basically That's they totally have to put a... That's totally until proven innocent, isn't is it? That, yeah. Is that so called they, California logic? <laughs> I guess. Oh. They've got to put a warning on the coffee cups that says basically this product contains acrylamide. Well, then you need to put it on bags of potato chips, See, I'm, I'm cookies, not... crackers... Yeah. It's in all that stuff. I'm not a fan of coffee. They need to say, warning, this product contains coffee. Well, I'm in danger. I'm no, going to no, be dead no. about 50. You know, I, I'm I not addicted say. to coffee, but I need it every day. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, this could be said of anything. Somebody could say, well, you oh. know, until somebody proves to me that water doesn't cause cancer, <laughs> you know, you have to prove it doesn't. Otherwise, you But you know what? Pain. But it is true that anyone who has cancer drinks water. That's true. Yeah. Yep. But therefore, Isn't maybe that, all diseases are caused by water. You know what? You could probably get a paycheck. I, I think all diseases. I, I, yeah. Yep. I think um, actually, you know, when they say there should be warning labels on the coffee in California, you know, because you can't, yeah. you can't disprove. I know. That, it's the craziest yeah. thing I've ever heard. It's well, opposite. not the craziest, yeah. but one of the craziest. And even the American Cancer Society says it's not clear if acrylamide affects cancer risk in people. It's not, they don't even Based know that it's Based on their studies, like. they, The American they can't Cancer Society. You, you know so, what I think? I really think that California needs to have big signs as you're entering the state saying, anyone who lives here, please note, it is a health hazard. Because it is true that everyone who lives in California will eventually die. That's true. Oh, that's true. Think about yeah, that. Yeah, statistics show that. Yeah, well, statistics show that people, people that, will that live, live in California. Yeah. Yeah. The death rate in, wow. a Calif in California will, will be 100%. Yeah. Wow. Do you realize that? Yeah. So, it's yeah. so it's just more, <laughs> we, we like to do some funny stuff at the beginning. Um, and this is one of a really good examples of this. Sad, um, but funny, but, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to work with acrylamide, actually, in a more, much more pure form. And we had to wear gloves because it's also a nerve, it can be a nerve toxin. <laughs> um, so that's you have to be careful with dosage. it. But that's yeah. a very high dose. Apparently, this has all got to do with Proposition 65 or something. Yeah. Yes, um, so, but do you know, that it actually says here, there are some studies that actually say that uh, there's evidence coffee may actually reduce the risk of some types of cancer. Mm -hmm. And so... Well, it's, the, the doses that were tested at the American Cancer Society was 1,000 to 10,000 yeah. times higher than the levels that yeah. people would be exposed to in the foods or the coffee. Yeah. And yet, they weren't finding cancer. And yet, the, the micro right. amounts that are in the coffee, is, yeah. you can lose it's a lawsuit just, over. It's, they're, so. they're basing it on junk science, is what it comes down to. Some things that were released in the 80s. And it's like, hello, get more up to date, you know, mm -hmm. and, and listen to the American Cancer Society. <laughs> um, if they're not saying it's dangerous, then chances are, you know, yeah. again, that's based on scientific studies that have been done. It's not, so... Okay. Uh, California has so many rules and regulations like yeah. this. I mean, it's just getting ridiculous. Well, we did one on straws. Didn't we do one where they, yeah. if, you, if you don't you ask people if they want a straw, for, you can be penalized yeah. for that. You can get a fine. No, really? Yeah. If, if, if you, yeah, well, if you, if, if you, you offer, if you offer them a straw, right. you could get, you they could have, actually get jail sentence. Yeah. I think it was, it was six months or 12 months because people have to ask for a straw. Right. To, you get, otherwise, if you offer them a straw, that's, totally destroying the environment and the habitat and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It, I bet people are flooding to California because they want to live under stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I'm sure. Well, this is funny. Yeah. I hear somebody said that a county in California once nearly banned hydrogen dioxide as it is deadly if inhaled. Everyone know what hydrogen dioxide is? Water. Water. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Moving on. 
Air Force Colonel's career restored after same-sex marriage discrimination incident. So we actually talked about this article um, mm -hmm. when it first came out. I think it was late yeah, last year. Yeah. And um, this is about Colonel Leland Bohannon. And basically, he declined to sign a certificate of appreciation for the same-sex spouse of an airman that was retiring that was under his command because he's a Christian and he is not in support of same-sex marriage, so he wouldn't sign um, this certificate of appreciation and he was he was passed up then for promotion and went on a service record as being discriminatory right. and what he did though is he had his superior actually right. do the signing mm -hmm. um, and yet you know he was severely attacked for that sort of thing and now well yeah he, um, uh, he had a promotion denied version. to him right. it seems because of that and yet he actually had somebody else sign that letter who wasn't like him, wasn't a Christian who, who right. didn't agree it with was actually higher marriage. Up. But, but what's happening is, is so typical of the atheists today, the secularists, they don't want to have freedom of religion. They want to impose their religion on everyone else. Right. And that's the whole point. They want to make Christians act that, like They try to make out, oh, you Christians shouldn't be imposing your religion on us. Well, we're not the ones imposing our religion on us. That man uh, wasn't trying to impose his religion on somebody else. It was just his religious conviction. Right. But the secularists wanted to impose their religion on him and stop well, him getting a promotion. And yeah. that's what gives me, gets me. The Military Religious Freedom Foundation, um, the founder of that, Mickey Weinstein, or Mikey Weinstein, said... This is an attempt to subordinate man's law to God's law. Everyone in the military takes an oath to protect the Constitution, not the Bible. But again, what makes man's law... I mean, if, if atheism, which we just talked last week, is a religion, then, that's, mm -hmm. then it's one religion versus another religion is what it, what it really comes down right. to. So why should, why should the atheistic or the secular religion be superior to, right. to uh, Christianity, to the Bible's religion, so to speak? So mm -hmm. it's... They, they're undermining their own ideas even by calling atheists. Well, well, as I've said many, many times, it's really a clash of two religions. It started back in Genesis. You know, God said, don't eat the fruit of the tree, obey God's word. And the devil said, did God really say, you can be like God, you can be your own God. And that's the battle. It's the same battle right now. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're reading about here in this news item is that battle. Right. The gay marriage issue is, the ba is that battle. The abortion issue, the racism issue. It's all the same battle between God's word and man's word. And it used to be that there was a great respect. And that, that's the change you see. And I was uh, really talking about that in regard to the new book that I was mentioning, Gospel yeah. Reset, yeah. in that the older generation in America, in the West, Western world tend to be more Christianized. The younger generation are so much more secularized. Mm -hmm. And so there's that growing chasm between those two. And now we're seeing the clash of worldviews from those that, even if they weren't Christian, still built their morality on the Bible. And those that say, no, it's man that determines truth. And that's, that's really the clash that's happening. Hey, there's a couple of comments here about the California, uh, the California um, uh, item that we were talking about before. One said that uh, breathing, breathing air in California is dangerous uh, because that, you know, that may cause cancer because if you breathe air, it's possible. Uh, <laughs> somebody else said they love junk science because look at how some of them love the junk science of evolution. That's yeah, true. Well, it's true. <laughs> and there's a bit about coffee. That's junk science. And yeah. so, anyway. Somebody wants to know about your eye, Bodhi. Oh, they can see it. You know, I was wondering if people would see that. Was Somebody that, was that your wife? <laughs> Who is our daughter? I want to know about this. You know, my wife has a great right hook, but no. Um, my son plays baseball, and about a week ago, uh, one of the kids threw a ball in, and, you know, I'm sitting there cleaning up balls, getting all the bats all ready. Boom, hit me right there. Oh. Rang my bell pretty good. But, uh, you know, with my heart condition and all the blood thinners that I'm on, it really sticks around. You can really see it. <laughs> So I, He's I, thought, okay. I thought it was fitting, you know, I spoke at the women's conference, yeah. which was a big success this past weekend, and mm -hmm. I get up there in front of all the women, and I thought, well, you know, it's a women's conference, I should wear makeup, right? <laughs> um, but then I stopped, no. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> do that. Had to have a little fun with it, but yeah, I got my bell rung with a baseball. Okay, um, meet your interstitium, a newfound organ. So, In a what? Interstitium. Interstitium. Mm-hmm. So this is a really neat thing. So we, cell biologists have known for years that there is tissue around every cell in your body, or sorry, fluid around every cell in your body. Then that wasn't new. We call that, you know, the interstitial space and there's fluid in there. But what they have found was that there's more than just fluid there. All that fluid is connected um, and by these basically fluid filled channels. And that's even connected to your lymphatic system, which no one knew. It, no one knew that all these with, things were With connected. all the medical knowledge and all the research they've done, we, 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 we find out man 
doesn't know a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when this first kind of hit the news, uh, this was a while back, we actually mentioned this. Mm -hmm. But, they, you know, they had some preliminary comments on it. And, of course, right. now it's finally out, um, you know, here in a, a, a technical journal article. But, uh, you know, I, I'm fascinated by it for, for a simple reason. Here we were looking at something thinking, oh, that's not that complex. It's mm -hmm. just a bunch of collagen, which is kind of like the right. connective tissue. But uh, come to find out, it's much more complex than people thought. You know, yeah. you get in there and actually look at it the right way. I guess our problem was, you know, when we pull, pull you know, things out to look under a microscope, you know, it, it drains the fluid, we cut them open. They collapse. So you don't see that. Yeah, we didn't so see that. So here them. they get the opportunity to actually take a look and come to mm -hmm. find out it's intricate. It is fascinating. And, and it's just amazing, too, because it's connected to the lymphatic system, which carries fluid all over our body. They said that may be a way that tumors spread. You know, you have tumor in one organ, and because these, these tissue, because this interstitium yeah. exists and this fluid can get into the lymphatic system, that's how it carries those cancer Boom, cells. There it goes. All so, over. It, it's so this amazing. could have a great, great influence on the way they look at how diseases can affect your mm -hmm. body and that sort of thing. Right. They think it might act as a shock absorber because it's found in connective tissue. So mm -hmm. it may help. And so, again, it just amazes me. I taught anatomy. So if we dropped you and you bounce, it's because yeah. of your interstitium? Is <laughs> so that it? Not quite bounce, yeah. but you're more protected. Yeah. And I taught anatomy and physiology for years at the college level. And, you know, you, you kind of think of anatomy and physiology as being kind of static. You know, it, well, we know pretty much all there is to know. But then something like this comes along, and mm -hmm. it just makes you even more in amazement of the complexities of our bodies and how we're still learning things and I don't think there'll be an end and, and just think know, this I, could change the way you greet people like hi how's your interstitium <laughs> that could be a new greeting couldn't it <laughs> could be. Uh, only for you Ken <laughs> you know I tested this here recently and come to find out I don't have as much interstitium right up here where baseball takes you <laughs> you need a little more yeah it, it, it got me <laughs> yeah so it, it, is, it is neat, and hopefully we'll be able to understand more about it. Just like your skin is a giant mm -hmm. organ. I mean, your skin is actually an organ, too. Yeah. So this is another example. It's not in one mm -hmm. particular area, but now, it's kind of all isn't it, over. Isn't your skin said, it, it was said to be the biggest organ Largest that we organ. have? Mm -hmm. What about the interstitium? How does that compare yeah, to the skin? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, it could be yeah, even bigger. So out. Because it lines even, it's even your digestive tract, it's mm -hmm. in your organs, it's around your, or, I mean, it's everywhere. Well, yeah, it, it says here the human body is about 60% water, about two-thirds so that's found inside of cells, but the other third is outside the cells in mm -hmm. this uh, interstitial, interstitial fluid. Yeah. So, so. Um, it's fascinating. That's where a third of it is. We've been, oh, that's where that other third went. I would say the more <laughs> you know? we know, the yeah. less we know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, it helps me understand a lot because it means Georgia is more complicated than we thought. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, somebody here said California makes as much sense as the mayor of London saying that anyone caught with a knife will feel the weight of the law. Because, you know, people use guns to kill, so they want to ban guns. Now, people are using knives to kill, so let's ban knives, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? London is the most murderous city in the world, and right. guns are not even an issue. It's all done by knives. No, so, they're using are you ban knives? so this must be another problem other than guns and knives. I, I think, it, yeah. I think it's called sin. Yeah, it's called sin. yeah. 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 The answer is in Genesis. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> yeah. There we are. Now, now, don't get me wrong. There are some great people in California that probably oppose a lot of this stuff. You know, we oh, want yeah. to encourage you guys yeah. out there. I know you guys are having to deal with it, and uh, you're involved with it. But uh, you know, I, I, I want to encourage people to raise up California in prayer. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? When we go to California, some of the churches out there, we get some tremendous responses. And you know, people in states like that who are Christians, they have to stand bold. They and do. I find they're Every often day. they're often really on fire Christians. I, I find that. Yeah. So, and we get a, we get quite a number of Californians that come out here to Kentucky. Yeah. And then they want to stay. <laughs> yeah. Except when it's snowing when in it's April. Snowing. Just saying. So, okay. Again. Why aren't there any <laughs> supersized whales? Okay. So. Like they're not big enough already? No. So evolutionists, okay, according ah. to evolutionary ideas, okay, so basically land animals, after they had evolved mm. on land, went into the ocean and became the sea creatures. Can, right? can we just stop there for a moment? Yeah. I, I, okay. Okay. Did, did you hear what Dr. Pedham just said, right? Mammals on land what supposedly animals? went into the ocean and evolved into the, the creatures sea that we see, whales. the mammals that we see. For All instance... Those. In this article, it actually says here, um, dolphins are related to hippos. I mean, when you look at a dolphin, you think hippopotamus. Think about that. Uh, and sea lions and, and seals are related to dogs. I see that every time I look at my dog. I see a sea lion. Yeah, that, that's, I can understand that. And, and manatees, 
Manatees are related to elephants. I, I mean, when I've been to the zoo, the Cincinnati Zoo, they have manatees because there. Because they both have big ears. Oh, yeah, I, as soon as I look at a manatee, I'm thinking, that's an elephant. Yeah, right? I know. So anyway, so go on, go on. Okay, so, so okay. that's the idea. And they, so they expect it, once they got into the water, that there would be really no constraints on the size that they could go to because the water is cooler, obviously, than the land. So the larger that you are in the water, the better off you are because you have smaller, what they call volume to surface area. So you don't lose the, don't heat, lose as, the heat. It's yeah. an advantage to be yeah. big because you don't lose the heat as much. But what they find is that actually there are constraints and they're saying the biggest constraint is food. You can't actually get enough food to become really large. And you know what this is? One giant story. Yeah, I wrote that That's here. all it is. That's what I wrote. Storytelling. It's a storytelling. Yeah, but, yeah, but it says that, right? They're limited by food. But then it goes on and says, but, but baleen whales are the exception. And then, and then, it, gives start, an, then, then it gives another exception. Other exceptions. Yeah. So in other words, we've got this story. This is why they don't evolve to great size, except they do are great size. So, it's, it's very confusing. And the thing is, is that to develop the baleen system, I mean, they say, well, that had to have evolved and that's what allowed them to get bigger. But how? I mean, how do right. you evolve something that complex? Well, how do you, well, do here, that? you know, they, they say when you go back in the water, you lose heat so fast that basically you're going to die. So they said to stay warm, uh, they, uh, uh, they actually had to grow to large sizes so they can produce more energy in their bodies. Well, hold on a second. How did that happen then? Let's yeah. say these animals go in and they all die. How do they, how do they evolve? Yeah, how do you I mean, evolve if, that slowly? If all these initial mm -hmm. ones are going to go in and die from the heat, how, how do they change so quick? It's got to be like that. Yeah. Hey, hey, what does this mean? Dr. Georgia Purdom may put up with Ken Ham during Answers News, but she knows how to get him back. <laughs> what are you planning? <laughs> I don't have any nefarious plans to my knowledge, so... <laughs> Oh, and hey, oh, somebody hey, here you know said what? killer whales are obviously sea zebras. <laughs> sea zebras. Yeah. I like that one. That's yeah. a good there we one, go. So. Hey, why not just believe what God has to say? Here's yeah. an all-powerful, all-knowing God says he created these things. Uh, on the fifth day of creation, land-dwelling uh, animals were made on day six. Flying and sea creatures made on day five. Having them made by an all-powerful God, this isn't a problem. Yeah, I, even when I read this, it says, so why are marine mammals in general larger than their terrestrial relatives? They're not relatives, first of all, and secondly, they're designed that way. I mean, that's just and there the are yeah, You know, it was interesting, um, I tweeted on this this morning, and I said, you know, it's obvious that dolphins look like hippos and manatees look like elephants, mm -hmm. and of course I was being facetious. And of course, there were all these atheists that got on there and said how stupid I was because I didn't understand evolution because it's nothing that got, it hasn't got to do with how they look, it's to do with their genetics. You're a geneticist. What, so what does genetics tell but us? How they look has to do with their genetics. It's all, that's all encoded in the genetics. So the two are absolutely related. So I don't, that, that's irrelevant. And see, the point that we make over and over again is God created separate kinds. You can have species within a kind. Variation. And people say, why don't you define a kind? We've defined kinds We've many defined times. Yeah. If, if, we wrote a chapter if, on it. If, if animals can interbreed, that yeah, they're the same kind. The kind. And same so kind. all dogs are one kind. All yeah. elephants are one kind. But all manatees cats. aren't the same kind as a dog. Right. <laughs> as an elephant, I should right. say. Because <laughs> elephants, <a> <laughs> elephants live on land and manatees right. live in the sea, yeah. right? Seals right. are not right. part of the dog kind. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Some frogs may be developing a resistance to the disastrous um, chytrid fungus. And so this is about a fungus that actually um, grows on the skin of frogs, which is a problem because that's how they breathe. Mm -hmm. And so it takes over their skin and obviously they die. And it's been called right. like literally the worst infectious disease ever recorded among vertebrates. It's, okay, it's okay so I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. If this is the worst of the disease amongst mm -hmm. vertebrates, they, give, they, they say they give the fungus a name. Yes. Can you pronounce that, please? <laughs> okay. Batra cochitrium dendrobatitis. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. That's my best. That's, looks that's what I good. thought. You that know? sounds pretty good. I'm sure you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I yeah. was thinking that's exactly how it's pronounced. Latin. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so this is. I just call it fungus. That's what I'd prefer to call it. Yeah. But they, you know, they talk for sure. about normally what happens is a lot of times, and they found that 
that these frogs in Panama are rebounding and they're not as affected by the fungus. Yeah, so, they weren't ready for that either. That kind of surprised right, them. Right, because they normally when that down. happens, they think the fungus mm -hmm. is what's getting weaker or the microbe. Well, it mm -hmm. turns out it's the frogs are developing a resistance to the pathogen. But of course, they call it evolution. Evolution. Yeah, because it's developed. It's nothing but natural selection. They already had the genetic okay. information. They're basically, it took time to wipe out the ones that couldn't survive and the right. ones that could survive were still mm -hmm. left there. Yeah. And then they go about and try to equate, do an equivocation fallacy on natural selection and say, look, it's evolution. That's a fallacy. A lot In fact, towards the end of the article, they say, if we can selectively breed more resistant animals, well, what's selective breeding? Mm -hmm. It means you try to find the ones that have the genetic information to be resistant and then you select for them, right. which again, and they, and they use the word evolution. It's got nothing to do but with evolution. Like the question, where did the information come from in the right. first place? And you know, you the frogs, what they're doing is they're actually secreting, they, they sort of secrete antibi their own antibiotics. They're secreting antimicrobial peptides through their skin and that actually is what kills the fungus. And it's possible, I mean, we don't know the genetic reasoning behind how, this, how their peptides have changed, their proteins that they're secreting have changed. Mm -hmm. It could be due to some mutation that happened or it could be that that information was already there. That might um, just in the produce sense, more of it. Right, or, you like know, we just don't know all the genetic reasons behind hey, hey, it. Okay, I'm going to test you again. That fungus, how did you pronounce it? How did you pronounce that fungus? Go on. I got to look. Go on. That's how I said it. Fungus. Pro pronounce Batracho it. <laughs> See, <laughs> Batrachochytrium dendrobatidae. Okay, somebody here has an idea for naming it to make no, it easy. Uh -huh. Athlete's frog. Athlete's frog. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that, that makes... Doesn't that make a lot of sense? Yeah, but yeah, this is right. an evolution. Even though they keep using that word, it doesn't mean what they, they think yeah. it means. Yeah. <laughs> It's well, not you know, later it on, is. they actually say natural selection and evolution, but then, in the, you know, the, the very next line or so, it says evolving. So they, yeah. they're basically just ignoring. See, somebody in the audience here process. asked for you to say that fungus name again. No, That's why I'm I got you to do that. No, I'm because I know who he is, and he's in trouble if he asks me to say that again. <laughs> you mean it's that guy over there that I'm it's pointing to? It's that guy right over there. Yeah, I, I can see him. So. Yeah, I know who All he right. is. He's from Australia, by the way. I know he is. He, he's, he's Australian. Give me trouble. All right. Um, untreatable super gonorrhea case could be that could be tip of the iceberg. So this is about so we um, went from fungus to bacteria. <laughs> I had to put these <laughs> kind of answers news that we have from, haven't from yeah. a disease in frogs to one in humans. So this is oh. a, a, a man in the UK has become the first patient with a type of gonorrhea that they cannot kill with antibiotics. And so I'm not surprised that this happened. I mean these are sexually transmitted diseases that are very common. So the more that you treat them with antibiotics, the more likely you are to have a resistant version eventually come up. It isn't the best way to treat these diseases is obey God's word in regard to sex yeah. and, mm -hmm. and for marriage well, to be one yeah. man for one woman? And wouldn't that basically eliminate yeah. the, these sort of things? Don't be sexually it, immoral. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, we're, we're in a culture full of sin, you know, people yeah. are out there doing this sort of thing. But here's what they say. They say this is evolution. Is this evolution? It's not evolution. Again, no. it's just adaptation. I mean, and, so let, and what... Let me ahead. get this straight. The, the frogs changed into frogs. Mm -hmm. People still change into people. Gonorrhea is still gonorrhea. It's still gonorrhea. That's yeah. not evolution. It's just you kill we, we off... open the door yeah. on this. You kill off all the ones that don't have the ability to resist the antibiotics. And so guess what survives? The, the ones, ones that, that do. do. And so. the ones that do survive are weaker, are weaker than uh, the ones that right, they've eliminated. Originally. Because usually it's because they've got less variability, yes. less, right. or, or, or it could even be a mutation that's caused. Yeah, because bacteria do that typically. I mean, they can, they're master adapters. They're designed to adapt. They're designed to change in that sense. But they're still bacteria. They don't become anything else. Yeah. But they can be more problematic for us. And, and gonorrhea, I mean, there's 300,000 reported cases in the U.S., but most people don't report it. So they think there's probably 600,000 cases. So you're talking mm -hmm. nearly a million, you know, half a million, more than well, half a million Well, look what they say around it. the world here. They're saying oh, yeah. 78 million. million men and women each year get it. Yeah. That see, shocks me. See, but listen to this statement. The bacteria that cause gonorrhea are particularly smart. I, you know, I noted that. I know. Do you realize that's a reification fallacy? Yeah, they're not, they're not <laughs> they're, consciously They're sitting there thinking, oh boy, we've oh, got to become to resistant. This. Yeah. No, and every time we use a new class of antibiotic to treat the infection, the bacteria evolve to resist. They're very smart. They evolve a resistance. It's got nothing to do with yeah, that. They got together, they had powwows, and they went to university mm -hmm. and figured out how to get around it. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, here in the Creation Museum, actually, we have a display in the flood geology section. And there's a little room there. We have a natural selection exhibit. And you can see in there where it has information on uh, bacterial resistance to antibiotics. And actually, Dr. Purdom was the one that wrote all the information for yeah. that, uh, showing you it has nothing to do with evolution. It's to do with uh, information that's already there or the inability to do something, the loss of information. Right. And that one specifically talked about Heliobacter pylori. Yeah. See, I know how to pronounce Helico. that one. Yeah. That, causes <laughs> that causes stomach ulcers. Okay. It can, yeah. Yes. All right. What is Easter and why do Christians celebrate this holiday? So, Buddy, why don't you talk about the significance? I mean, obviously, hopefully, as Christians, right. we know why we celebrate that holiday. But what is the real issue with this? Well, that's part? right. You know, and Easter just came and just went. And, you know, sometimes we forget about it for a whole year. Mm -hmm. um, although the resurrection should be on the mind of Christians, you know, almost constantly. I am before you say anything, Bodhi, it's important to know this article was written by an Episcopal priest. Okay. And uh, it was published on Fox News, actually, mm -hmm. is where it was published. And, uh, you know, they're running through here. You know, overall, most of the article is a, is a decent article talking about Easter and the significance of Easter. But one of the things that caught my eye, and I see this more and more, is there's a comment down here that says, of course, the Roman Empire didn't much care for someone preaching a message like this, talking to Jesus. The empire uh, relied on wealth and was built on might and fear, and Jesus' teaching undercut all that. So basically, it was the Romans that conspired to go against Jesus and do all this. Now, that threw up a red flag to me because one of the things that I've seen in some of the circles behind the scenes more and more, and I've seen this uh, infiltrate churches and seminaries and Christian colleges, is this concept that the Romans were, were entirely to blame. And we have to be very careful of it. If you actually go back and see what the Bible says on that, um, a, a lot of the Jews were the ones who actually were the ones who arrested Jesus. They actually took him uh, to the high priest. And then it went back and forth between Pilate and the high priest, and it was the, the well, Jews Pilate the representing the Romans even washed his he washed hands, his hands yeah. from the blood of it. And then no. what? What did the Jews say? They said his blood be on us and our children. And you know, throughout the New Testament, one of the things that we consistently saw was you know that the, the Jews received the blame. Now, so did the Romans to a certain degree, but the Jews really received the the blame on this. Now, I've seen more and more now people are saying, well, then you can't use the New Testament. That is an mm -hmm. anti-Semitic. Uh, text. You need to throw the Bible. You can't be doing that sort of thing. But we need to step back and, and just realize the honesty of this whole thing. The New Testament was written by Jews saying, yeah. you know, it, it broke their hearts that the Jews were doing this. Mm -hmm. um, but they were the ones who uh, was responsible for taking right. Jesus there. But Jesus had to die by the hand of the high priest, essentially. Yeah. Well, they were but, under, I mean, they're under Roman rule. So to right. get right. The per, they had to get permission they to do it, but permission. they were the ones that mm -hmm. wanted to do it. Yeah. But you know what? The oracles of, of, of God, the scriptures came through the through Jews, Jews primarily. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I mean, Christians, but most people don't realize it's the Christians that, that love the Jews more than just about anyone else. We want to see them come to repentance right. as well. According to Paul, there is no distinction between Jew or Gentile. Right. Because we're all one race. We yeah. all go back to Adam and Eve. We're all one race and we're all one in Christ. That's right. We're all one in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have this love. Uh, for the Jews, we want to see the Jews repent see, somebody, and, uh, and come out and say Judaism and things like somebody that. Somebody here made a, a very important statement. They said, in reality, we all killed Jesus with our mm -hmm. sins. Yeah. And that's true because that's we've all, all sinned sin in Adam. Yeah. 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 So, so did you know? yeah, we have to be very careful of some of that. And, and that, that's why, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this article is, hey, here's a decent article, but there's still, still some stuff in there you have to be discerning about. Right. Yep. And you know what? We need to use that as a reminder for all of us. We need to make sure we're being, being biblical and not trying to go against what the Bible says to promote particular positions. Did you know we've run out of time? And I you know, know why? Because Georgia talks too much. Whatever. So we didn't yeah. get through all the articles. Okay, so we'll be back <laughs> on Thursday, minus these two. <laughs> well, so, uh, <laughs> actually, I'll be at, I'll be in Canada. Uh -oh. I'm going. Yeah. I'm well, going. so I'm going to get another Canadian up here to help me. Avery, Avery. our yeah. token millennial. So it'll just be I'm, girls. Day. I'm flying to Alberta, oh, and I'm going to be speaking at the homeschool conference here, and speaking yeah. in some churches and in Alberta. And uh, so it's my Canadian week. I hope I get over the border because I believe marriage is one man for one woman, and I don't believe in abortion. <laughs> yeah. I believe abortion is killing okay. a human being. Don't say will that I, on Facebook. Somebody might find out. Will, <laughs> will they let me into Canada yeah, if I believe that? I think they will. So, okay. All right, we're signing off, and we'll see you back on Thursday mm -hmm. at two. God bless you all. Thank you, sir.